Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hope elect of Israel. You Hebrew Israelites, the so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, West Indian Haitians, and the foreign Israelites that are scattered across the four corners of the earth. First and foremost, when the face the east, to give all praises to Barakatha Yahweh. Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Barakatha Yahweh. Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Barakatha Yahweh. Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Want to give all praises to Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shah. Ba Shem Yahweh Kako Dash. Want to give double honors to the elders and apostles who led me to this truth and have been ordained by the Lord to teach the flock how to live, repent, pray, fast, to show forth the Lord's righteousness, righteousness and mercy, judgment, forgiveness, and wrath. All those who are part of the elect, Lord willing, we're part of that number. This is also a sincere salutation to all the hopeful elect and the brothers that have been pushing the truth across the four corners of the earth and have been exalting the name of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai to the best of their abilities every day. His judgment always comes to light. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9. And is not slack. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. So today, you know, I usually, uh, you know, take some, uh, some scriptures down. And I, and I come and, uh, you know, you know do, do a lesson of uh, one of the elders and apostles. But uh, the Lord just putting the spirit on me today. Just uh, roll in the spirit, just bring out some scriptures. Uh, you know, part of this lesson, I'm going to title it Salvation for Jacob and uh, Destruction for Esau Edom. You know, that's what the topic is today. So, Lord willing, this be edifying for the flock. So, let's start at Let's start right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For Yahweh is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Now, don't get this confused, because he's the author of peace, but you must have war to obtain peace. You must have somebody to go to war with to obtain peace, which is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. So now we're going to do this. side of the Lord, okay? Because first and foremost, they're probably scared because they might not be an Israelite. That's usually where, why people don't do it, is because they got that fear that they're not an Israelite. Like, if I if I didn't know if I was an Israelite, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I would be out there trying to be like them, trying to run from the truth. But I know I'm an Israelite. Why? Because it's already been confirmed by the elders and apostles. Hey, they didn't call me Jake for no reason. Okay, they didn't call me a brother for no reason, even though I went off, because that's what brothers do. You know, we go off, we make mistakes sometimes. You know what I mean? Lord willing, I'm brought back into the flock, but until then, I'm gonna keep worshiping Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. I'm gonna keep tithing to my elders and apostles because I believe in these men. You know, you're supposed to do that. If you really believe in these men, we're gonna pull up a scripture right after it. Well, I'm gonna show you, it's in, it's in, it's in Corinthians. People always want to get all butthurt about it, but we're supposed to give to our elders and apostles. Maybe they don't need it. Maybe they do. Don't matter. That don't change. That doesn't change the laws. That doesn't change the laws and the statutes and commandments of Yahweh Shem Shah. So right here, Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord, Yahweh Shem Shah is a man of war. The Lord is his name. His name is Yahweh. Baha Shem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shah, his son. And they both don't have the same power. That's why Yahweh Shah had to come and defeat death to be able to rescue, to save us from this time. Lord, we're be part of that number. So now I'm going to bring this up. This is 1 Corinthians. Oh, 
Hold on. So this is 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 11. So, well, let me go back. Let me get back to the King James Version. So it says, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, talking about great real stone, because they sown it to us, the, 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 the followers and everybody, you know, Apostle Dahar, uh, you know, uh, uh, Apostle Rakar, um, you know, all the other elders and apostles, uh, uh the GMS Mississippi, uh, uh, with the GMS page master, um, you know, uh, all these apostles, I'm still letting them know because I'm doing the truth, but I do know who they are, you know, I know who they are, I listen to their videos, and, uh, you know, I'm coming more to understand their names and things, but at first, you know, it's almost like, I still haven't been called. I'm just still, I'm just still someone. The Lord did call all men to come preach this, but I haven't been called by Great Millstone. So this is why I don't have fringes on. This is why I haven't taken that step because I don't want to go past that step. I haven't been called yet. I'm still learning. But that doesn't mean that you don't, you don't need to go out to the highways and byways and present yourself as a living sacrifice. We still got to do that, regardless. Because some people been doing preaching in highways and byways for years and still haven't been in GMS. But that doesn't mean that you don't do it. You still got to do it. You know, it's all the spirit, how they let people in the fold. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, it is a great, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? So it's going to come to a time where some of the brotherhood over here might be struggling. Somebody here over there by me struggle, you know? And we want to be able to have you know, at least a little something stored up so in case one of the brothers is struggling, we can help them. You know, you want to have that kind of mindset. You know, Lord willing, I can get out of this court case, all this bullshit. I can get out of all that so I can store more money so I can put it back so when the time comes and, you know, I'm not saying the brotherhood even needs me. I'm just saying that, you know, maybe maybe my elder, maybe my elder up, up, up there in, uh, in, in Oklahoma City, my head leader, maybe he might need some help. You know, I can give I can give it over to him. You know, they they got it without me, man. But you know, you want to keep that mindset, cause what if they do let me into the fold? Then I gotta keep that. You see, I gotta be able to have something to to show. That I care about the brotherhood, though know, it's more than just spiritual things. They they spend all their time and dedication into teaching us this doctrine. You know, the best thing you can do is set make yourself available for Yahweh Shimmy Howard Shai servants. You know, because first and foremost, they're the servants which are that they, they have rank. They're still servants though, you know what I mean? We're all we're all many gods, you know. But we're still servants to Yahweh Shimon Hashem. We still haven't obtained our portion. We have still haven't obtained our portion. We're gonna read about that in a second. But uh, let me see where the where the spirit is leading me. Uh, like I said, we haven't received our portion, and you know we're supposed to supposed to do this. This is John.
John 21. John chapter 21, verse 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simeon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto them, I said unto him, Lord, Yahweh, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh saith unto him, feed my sheep. What's that? Sound doctrine. But, you know, you want to be able to sit back, you know, if your brother got a job, you know, that's why you got to get a job. So in case one of the brotherhood, people in the brotherhood need, need some help, you know, you want to be able to help them with something, you know? Because the times is finna get hard, the banks are gonna start crashing, maybe some people over here in the brotherhood need help. You know? You wanna help them. Some, some of the brotherhood got children and stuff. I don't got children. I should be able to help them. You see what I'm saying? And that's the kind of mindset you wanna have. You wanna have a giving mindset more than a taking mindset. And this is what I wanna get into. Brotherhood, but usually the brotherhood they'll tell you, hey, we good, but give to the apostles, you know, and elders a great millstone. And I try to regularly do that because it's very important. If you say you believe these men, then you need to make sure that you know you're 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 not just you're not just a you know you're not just saying it. You know, you're you're someone who's putting that into action on a daily basis. You know, you're, you're showing, because well, like I said, it's put your money where your mouth is, right? I know, I know, I know, like, money is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, a, a sensitive subject, but like it says, put your money where your mouth is. If you really say you believe in these men, you will protect the brotherhood. You will help them, you know, regardless, you know? And that's how it is. You want to be able to help the brotherhood and make sure that, you know, if you ever do come into the fold, you already prepared yourself for, you know, that time. Maybe a brother needed help. You know, because we're coming in, we're going to come into a mass awakening. There's going to be a lot of brothers that wake up. There's going to be a lot of sisters that wake up. So, you know, you just want to keep that humbling state of mind of, hey, I don't need to put myself first. Cause we we all about not exalting ourselves. We about exalting the name of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And if you feed his sheep, we're talking about sound doctrine with that, with that, but it talks about giving over those carnal things, like I said in Corinthians, you know, uh, nine verse eleven to those to the servants. Cause they sometimes they need help, man. Sometimes they need help. They ain't gonna tell you because they meant. But if the Lord puts the spirit on you to help him, help him. You know? But uh, right here, it says Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, which is these, these deceivers with these false doctrines. And it says, freely ye have received, what? This truth, freely give this truth. That's why it says you got all these other other groups selling selling preset packages, they selling t-shirts, you know they doing all types of stuff. But you see Great Millstone, they don't do that. Great Millstone doesn't do that man. And that's why you can trust these men, not just because of that, but because they got the 100% truth. How are you going to have 50% of the truth? It says Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. They freely give that. So how much more is it not a big deal for you to help them uh, uh, financially if, if one of the brothers is struggling? You know? And that's just something, you know, the Lord putting the spirit of me to come out because we're coming in those times. 
where, where some brothers is gonna lose their jobs and they got some brothers got stuff going on you wouldn't even believe they got going on and they need that help and sometimes you don't have to say say nothing about it if you just listen to their videos enough they're gonna they're gonna the Lord gonna put the spirit on them to let to let it slip out like hey I'm dealing with this and then you can help them and that's elders on down every every brother's dealing with something you know and I'm gonna pull that up about that. So this is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You know, and we wanna we wanna we wanna we wanna be a help to the brotherhood. That was a help to us when we didn't have nothing, man. We didn't have no knowledge, we didn't have no understanding, you know? And people always take their rebukes as as a ways that it's like they might not care about you, but but honestly, the rebuke show you that they care about you more than other people. Because if they're not rebuking you, that means that they don't even care that you that you really gonna perish, man. When you really think about it, it just it means like whatever, you know. The spirit ain't that, that you know. They just gonna be like, all right, bye, you know. So so when they're when they're when they're rebuking you and teaching you and in your ass all the time, that means they like you the most. That means they really like you. You know, not saying that, you know, you know, like they just always like thinking about you or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is, is they don't want to see you perish. That's the whole point of them doing it. They don't want to see you perish. They love teaching sound doctrine. They love bringing people to the Lord. Why else would they do it for free? You know? So now we're going to do this, Zechariah. We'll change the subject a little bit. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Let me see what I got going on. Okay. So it says, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that all in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say, the Lord Yahabashim Havashai is my God. Okay? That's, that's what we're doing right now. We're calling on Yahabashim Havashai in the middle of the desert, in the wilderness. This is basically the wilderness. You know, and we, we, and, and, and I had a new brother, you know, and, and I, I, I feel like the Lord got the spirit on him, you know, because he said that he, he looked like a so-called white man. Well, you know, for him to accept the doctrine in the way he's doing the humbling himself, he just might be Jake. You know, and that's why, that's why we don't go off skin color. We go off of the spirit. Like, if they can humble themselves, that's the only, the only way they can, somebody can humble themselves if the Lord's dealing with them. But you got to go through the whole doctrine, and, and, and they got to be tested. They got to be vetted. They got to be seen if they're trustworthy. So just because they agree with one thing don't mean that later on they're not going to not agree with something else. You know? So you gotta, you know, it says don't lay hands on some uh, on, on, on somebody suddenly. Don't don't just lay hands on them, which means don't say this is my brother. Now, you know what I mean by saying it's a brother is somebody who's uh you know, they're trying to learn. You know, but they still gotta be vetted. He, he, even even all the elders and apostles say well, they still get vetted. They still got the elders and apostles checking them. You know? It's always like that. It's always gonna be like that. You know, it's, it's love though. You know, it's not hate. You know, we're trying to keep each other 
right mindset until you how about swim how a shot returns. You're gonna need that pressure, like it says, to to to, to make gold or silver. It, 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 it applies pressure. It needs pressure at all times. At all times, it needs some type of pressure. You know. So. uh What's up here next? So right here it says Job chapter 36 verse 12. But if they obey not, which is to repent and convert and re rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, I'm gonna put up that scripture next. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Who's that talking to? Just for Israel. But it's already written that two thirds of our people are not gonna come to this truth. They're not gonna come to it. So the Lord's sifting everybody out. So let's say you Israel, and I tell you something, and I say, hey, you need to repent and convert, and you need to do this. Well, you got a choice. If you can do it or not, that's how the elders work. You do it or not. Because everything you hear is coming from me, coming straight from the elders, okay? That's who I listen to. That's coming straight from them. We entered into other man's labors. But first, before I do that verse, let's do the, uh, Judges chapter 5 verse 11 They that are delivered from the noise of archers In the places of drawing water And that's talking about like your workplace You know where, where we work at You know There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah and, and, and first and foremost that, that, that righteous act is calling on the right name First and foremost, but you got most of Israel, they don't even want to use the names. They want to use Ra and, and Ja and you know, they want to use everything else, you know? They don't think these names are significant, but they're the only ones that are going to save you. So it says, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of, the, uh, of his villages in Israel, then shall the people of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, go down to the gates, which is the elders. You know? And who are the elders? The elders and apostles of Great Millstone. You know? So, uh, what was that next scripture the Lord put the Spirit on me to bring up? It was, uh, uh, Let's do this one. So this is a this is one that this is a real stumbling block. This one, next one in the next verse, Lord Willie, you can keep it on my head to remember. But it says, Romans, chapter 6, verse 14, for sin, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Yahweh forbid. Know ye not that to whom? Service to obey his 
servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of the uh, or of uh, or of unto obedience, or of obedience unto righteousness, Salaki. But Yahweh be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart, which is your mind, that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. See, it's a form of doctrine. It's a type of doctrine. It's one type of doctrine. One type of doctrine, man. It's not no other kind of doctrine. Now, what was that other scripture that he wanted me to bring up? You know, I'm going to just think, I'm going to just flow with this one. Uh, it's uh, when he bring it to my head. And this is why we're supposed to rehearse the righteous acts. Because he's telling us over here in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. It says, remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. That's why we're supposed to listen to the elders and apostles. See what I'm saying? But it says this also. It also says this. It also says in Ecclesiastes, which is Sirach chapter 3, verse 21, Seek not out things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. But what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence. For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. So there's so many things that the Lord hasn't even showed us yet. Okay, there's so much stuff that the Lord has not showed us and he's not going to show us. There's so much stuff that we ain't going to learn until we get to the kingdom. So it ain't no reason to think too much, but you need to think about the things that are going to save you, which is repenting, converting, learning how to keep the laws and statutes, commandments to the best of your abilities and, and seeking the Lord and learning something every day to the best of your abilities. So we're going to go into a part two. Shalom.